I got nothing. I, that's the case, but I got nothing to attack him with. Exactly. Yeah. But still. <laughs> but I know what you're talking about. Be yeah. clear. I'm not debating. Yep. No, no, we're, we're just about talking about, about yep. subjects. Yes. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. okay. Um, but if for some reason he feels that he needs to address it, please let me know, and we'll we'll work on it. Okay. Okay. Got it. There we go. <laughs> so please, um, I should have come over here to the mic so the people in life you could hear it, but um, we will alternate back and forth. So we'll just kind of start with Larry and then with Bob and you give him an opportunity to do an introduction. Thanks so much. Thank you. It's nice to be here. Um, my name is Larry Johnson. I uh, served as city councilman in 2010 to 2014. Then I was elected mayor 14 to 18 and, and uh, lost the mayorship to Christy, which she's doing a great job. Um, I've lived in Taylorsville now. I'm, she's a little older now. I've lived here 65 years, farmed a bunch of uh, land here, sugar beets, hay. My grandparents, I lived with them since my mom was a single mom. And uh, I learned two or three things while I lived with my grandparents. I learned that honesty, um, word was our bond, it's the way I am too. I wish I didn't have to lock my doors and cars and everything else because I was taught that way. We just left everything open and people were really honest. Uh, I learned integrity from, from a, a great mom and a great grandparents. Um, I also have, uh, I owned a business for 35 years, a truck tire business. Uh, so I learned how to budget money and spend money that uh, we had and uh, pull back when we didn't have it. So I feel like I'm, I'm qualified that way. That, uh, And then there's times when you have to spend some money to, to make money and do the right things. Um, I'm, a, I'm a person that um, listens to the citizens and uh, I'm concerned about people in, in uh, Taylorsville. Um, I'm not a big, a big, uh, supporter of big government. I think the, the real, real help is in the cities and uh, so that we can make those decisions. We see that enough of that right now going on and 
do this, do that, but uh, I think the buck stops and starts in, in city, and uh, I want to be a part of that. You probably wonder why I'm running again. I still think I have quite a bit to offer in the city. Uh, we get older, we get wiser, um, and uh, I'm a guy that uh, believes in Taylorsville, loved Taylorsville, lived here a long time, and, and uh, I'd like to serve again, so thank you so much. Thank you, Larry. I'm Bob, and I have lived in Taylorsville all of my life, actually. Born and raised, lived in three different homes in the same neighborhood, actually, within here. I've loved the city. I had a hard time thinking about wanting to leave when it was time to move out of Dad's house, honestly. And so I wanted to do what I could to stay here. It's been a wonderful experience to be here and to now be raising my own family here. So I, I've been able to see the city grow and develop over all of my life, honestly, and I love the trajectory that we have. We are at a great position where we can work to grow and to evolve the city a bit more, and I would like to see what I can do to be a part of that. I've been working with the University of Utah, actually, for the past 15 years now, and it's been quite an interesting ordeal to be able to learn all of the nuances about dealing with the state regulations, the procurement guidelines that we have there. So I feel that I've got a decent amount of experience learning how to work with the state government and I've always been fascinated in what can be done on the local level. My parents had taught me early on to be involved honestly and it was a wonderful decision to be able to do this and honestly I have to credit my oldest son for being willing to say, Dad, I think you have something to offer. You should run. And so I'm honored that I've been able to make it this far in the race and that so many people have felt that there are good things that can be done. And I'm excited to, to be able to discuss some of these things with everyone here. Thank you. Thanks, gentlemen. We appreciate it. Um, one of the things that we find it, as your role as a city councilman is we'll have to have a balanced budget. Are there things that, how do you feel about our current budget? Are there things within that you'd like to see funded or conversely not funded? Bob. Personally, I have not had an opportunity to look over everything in the budget to be able to give a clear answer on items that may need to be funded or possibly be cut. I think that the budget committee has been doing a very good job in staying on top of things. Our current council member, Dan Armstrong, has done a great job in helping to be a bridge between the city council and the budget committee and to help with some of those things. Having the financial background that I do working with the university, I would love to look at the budget in greater detail and see what items we can, add. Sorry, to take a look at the items that can best be funded through everything that we have, honestly. There are limited resources that are available. The only way to truly get more resources in the finances is to get more tax dollars, sometimes having to come through tax increases. I'd like for us to see what we can do to stay as fiscally sound as possible. I would like to see the trend of no to minimal tax increases maintained. And so I would like to see what we can do to get the most bang out of the buck, so to say. Whenever there's a need to fund something new, I'd like to see what we are willing to do without in order to fund what we have to live within our means. Thank you. Larry. Yes, I, I, I dealt with, with budgets for four years as mayor of the city. Uh, in those four years, we never did have a tax increase, which I'm proud of, but with the help of the council also, we worked things out. You know, in budgets, uh, which, you know, I went over the budgets and some things we had to cut that didn't make a little bit of sense and some things we added to, but we came to, to where we had a balanced budget. One thing about our people and our citizens is nobody likes a tax hike. In fact, I, I remember um, uh, one mayor, he reduced the taxes for the people. He was pretty popular about that. But uh, as long as we can keep a balanced budget and in my 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 thought is as I always have the saying is we need to decide between the, the wishes wants and needs you know the the wishes and the wants 
but the needs that we need is the city to grow and the people to grow because we can grow the people and grow the city at the same time but we if we always are growing the city the people are you know we're going to pay taxes to do it so we i think we've done a pretty good job mayor overson and in uh, uh the income we've had come in i was excited when i was mayor that we brought in quite a few businesses that um uh paid off pretty well and that makes it easy on all of us as taxpayers my goal as city council will work with the mayor and the other city council people to to do the same thing and um, I just uh, I like the way the city's going there's some things that bother me we can probably talk about in a little while but uh, other than that I think things are going good so thank you thanks gentlemen so follow up to that Larry you kind of just said there's some things you would like to see changed okay would you like to expand upon what those things you'd sure. like to see changed and sure. and go from there thank you I'll tell you I um, I remember and I always say it when I was mayor because back when I was council person we didn't have any problems but we had what really hurt me was when the little gal got hit with a car and killed up on 27th West that Halloween night and I was mayor then and then we had another couple of, of young kids get cro uh, hit down on 4700 no 4800 I think down by Christie's by that church house and I went and saw them at the hospital and it was sad and went to their house and I went over to the also the one that uh, passed away but there's a little monument up there but I remember as mayor I brought to the council to upgrade our our lighting and also our traffic uh, warning lights you know across the the crosswalks i would like to see more of those go in um people are crazy when they drive now i hate to say it i drive bus part-time for granite district and i'm dodging cars and putting a lot of brakes on but uh, i'd like to see a little more in the city um, to protect the people the citizens that are walking and jogging and walking their dogs especially the school children because uh, some of them don't think that quick you know because they're young and dart out but I, I've watched the the lights down on 27th here in those islands and they they hit the flasher and people stop and it's been a lot safer so I'd encourage us I would like to see a little more of that in our city um, I'm concerned about the parks I think I was talking to Meredith and uh, our county park over here is a disaster right now i've counted i live up there there's 15 dead trees there's ground looks like it uh, cattle were grazing in there and just dirt and it's that's a beautiful park and people use it with the frisbee and everything else and uh, i drove up to am i over three minutes yet because maybe i could talk 10 or 12 on this give you 30 seconds okay I drove up to 13th East where the other park is and there's hardly any dry spots up there but we have I think the mayor knows that uh, we have a lot of a lot of dead stuff down there and uh, I'd hope that we could get the county to make me take care of our park a little better uh, I know when I be, was mayor we put a lot of money into parks like Christie has and bettered them and put you know barbecue uh, uh, facilities in and and even made a new park and bought some property so those are a couple of things. Thank you. I, I don't have much time left. Thank you. Bob. Well, one of the things that I've been interested in is really the public safety. That's one of the biggest things that, that we have. We are at a very busy spot in the valley. We're a central location. We have a lot of traffic coming in and out. And the Taylorsville we have today, honestly, is not the same that it was when I was nine years old like my oldest is now. It's, it is a lot more chaotic, and I'd like for us to see what we can do to, to get the cooperation with our local police department, which they've done a great job with, to try to cut down on some of the crime that we have. We're not perfect, but we are in a very good place, but we can always improve. I've been actively serving with my neighborhood, neighborhood watch for several years, and it's fascinating all of the things that are seen. So again that just leads to the whole thing that public safety is one of the biggest things 
there are definitely improvements that we can and should be making to the parks as has been mentioned already the county facilities that we have i appreciate that we have those but i think it would be nice if we could coordinate with the county and get some improvements done but it all comes down to the timing on their on their master plan the budgets that are available so there's only so much that can be done and unfortunately there's not a magic light switch that we can do to fix everything right now it would just take time and we just need to make sure that we have an appropriate plan in place aside from that i i think that as long as we can work to make sure that the city continues to grow but not grow out of hand is probably one of the other big things we have several places that are being developed for housing and i'd love to make sure that we don't overdevelop if that makes sense riding up to the university on the public transit as i do daily riding down main street on that track train salt lake city proper is definitely not the same salt lake city that it was 30 years ago and i hope that we don't get to that point i would love what we have and i want us to preserve that as best we can thank you thanks do we have any rebuttal for a minute or any not a rebuttal just a comment sure go ahead okay so I was excited uh, to see when we went to our own police department. Um, four years ago or whatever, I was the only one that uh, was against the UPD. And uh, the reason why is I studied it. I was even on the board, and as long as I was on the board, I kept thinking maybe that was the right vote, but because it just kept on costing and costing and costing. Uh, I've been out with the police department. I've been on raids. I've been all kinds of things and I just want to tell the police and the fire that how much I love and appreciate them they um, I've seen them in action I've been with them and uh, they do a great job and uh, they even try to counsel some of the ones they arrest I've seen officer Lloyd do that and quite impressed that he tries to help them too so anyway I'm excited that we have our own police department thank you Larry Bob would you like to address please fire or otherwise well just that I I'm grateful that we have everyone serving that they have going out with the neighborhood watch as I do a I have the Taylorsville dispatch on speed dial ready to go if there's anything that we see and frankly it's a wonderful thing to be able to partner with them to keep the city in a safe place we cannot do it without them and I can't think of many people who'd be willing to put their lives on the line for us on a daily basis thank you Gentlemen, um, we live in the valley as a community as a whole, but we have individual boundaries by cities or county or otherwise. Uh, recently, uh, Salt Lake City Mayor Mendenhall um, posted a position where they are banning any new homeless shelters for the next six months in their city and encouraging that Salt Lake shouldn't be the only city to address that problem. How do you feel about Taylorsville sharing in the homeless situation, maybe to the extent of a homeless shelter. And is that the right place in our community? So Bob, you're first. Thank you. Honestly, the homeless problem exists everywhere in the Valley. Unfortunately, because of the central location that Salt Lake City has with being close to the airport and other amenities, it has become very easy to get out there, but there, there's the problem that spreads all throughout. And so, I do agree that this is a situation that has a problem that exists everywhere. Now, I don't necessarily feel that it that there should be a mandate that says each city should have to build a shelter at this location to these specifications. I feel that each city should look at the trends that are being seen in the in the city, what problems we have and what we can best do to address the problem as we can do best. I feel that the city can do a great job at assessing the needs and, and helping out as best we can, and hopefully a solution can be found as we can look at it logically. Larry. Thank you. I have a little bit different opinion on, on that. I, I used to talk to Mayor McAdams all the time about this, and uh, I'm a firm believer that the money spent for beds and we enable them to be there i think we need to have a program set up with all the jobs available 
uh, have a program to clean them up, to get them to apply for jobs, to, to, to use them in society. And um, because they're, they're great people, they just got, you know, maybe it's drugs or alcohol. I remember working at the Oxbow Jail for a couple of years and uh, counseling those young men, and, and that was their main problem, but they lost their families and everything else. But I think the solution is to get some programs and get them in, clean them up, uh, and also train them so that they can be presentable for a job. So that because a lot of jobs are going to want to want to give them a uh, drug test, and they're not going to pass if they're not clean. And uh, so I'm not a big proponent of uh, the beds. We can build and build and build and build, and we just enable them to be there. So that's my thoughts on that. Thank you. Um, obviously, it's not an easy situation, but thanks for your comments. Um, if you're elected to be on the council, you're going to be working with the other council members as well as the mayor and this other city staff. How would you describe yourself? As a team player? Or are you willing to maybe go against the grain with everybody else because you feel something's important for our city? So, Larry, I think you're first. You're next. Well, I'd be honored to be a, a councilman again. I, I had a great experience in 2010 when I was elected. Um, trying to think back, but we had, we had a great council. We, I think we had Mayor Wall. And um, I think I have a lot to offer. I have a lot of ideas and experience that came along with the council and the mayorship that I held. Uh, I get along. I know every one of the council people. They're great people. Um, I might be able to bring some new thoughts and some maybe a little bit of wisdom at my age. And um, I'd be honored for, to serve the people. I love, this, I love this city. I've lived here, like I said, a long time. And I know a lot of people, and I respect them. And people, in my mind, in this city are number one. Um, and I'll look out for them. As a councilman and, a, and as a mayor, I remember getting calls. And um, people have a complaint. And I'm kind of the, on the guy that goes to their house. I used to go to people's houses, knock at the door, make an appointment, go talk to them in their living room about their problems, and then take it back and, and see if we could work something out. Just in closing here, I'd like to tell you, I got a call one day as mayor that the guy was upset with the noise of the airplanes flying over and asked me to call the White House and, and uh, see if I could get the, the patterns switched. And <laughs> I had to kind of laugh. I said, you know what? I live the same pattern you do. Let's just live with it. And he kind of agreed, and I never heard from him again. But he thought I had the power to do that, which I don't. But yeah, um, I kind of chuckled about that. So thank you. Well, I feel that I am fairly easy to get along with. Obviously, no one is perfect, and you cannot get along with everyone, but I feel that I am pretty good at being a team player to look at things, and I'm willing to tell people, no, that cannot be done. The position that I've had for the past roughly nine years with engineering up at the university has been telling people no a lot of times. Many times people want to do something and it cannot be done because there are issues with state procurement that they can that they would be going against. Or they may be looking at using funding that came from a federal source and there is a lot of red tape with those federal funds that are being used. And so I have been quite happy to be the one to tell them, no, this cannot be done. But this is actually a decent idea, worthwhile idea. What can we do to make this so that it's a reality to fit the vision that you have and the constraints that we have? I feel that we need to make sure that we are being beholden to the citizens that we have. We have taxpayers that are helping to fund the city. We need to be accountable to them. We need to make sure that we are doing everything that we can. And honestly, sometimes the ideas that come up are not going to be able to be an instant yes. It may require that no. And honestly, there's nothing wrong with being, the, with being in the position of saying 
I think that we need to take some more time to look at this, look at what we can do to make sure that this is something that can work and actually fits the vision and purpose that we have and the constraints that we have because we have so many check boxes that need to be marked. Thank you. Comment? What's that? Sorry, I just missed something. Can I say one more thing? Sure. Uh, so we're running for council seat five. Um, I remember we all vote, we have five votes. And I remember, you know, every, every, every district has a different problem. But I believe in, just because I'm district five city council, I'm gonna go check out city council three's problem because we all are together on whether it's good for the city or good for the citizens. So we're all in this together, the city council. So we look after each other's, that's what I do. If there's a problem in district one, I want to go see what the problem is, if it's a zoning problem or things like that. So I know what I'm talking about. I just don't want to raise my hand and vote because somebody else did. I want to kind of know what's going on. Thank, Thank you. So, gentlemen, um, on the council, you're going to have citizens come to you and ask you to fix something that's outside of your jurisdiction. Maybe it's fix this interchange that happens to be with UDOT or some other entity that you don't have control over. What would be your approach of addressing that? problem first as a legitimate problem and then communicating with their citizens well the first thing that I would like to do is something that I do on a daily basis I cannot fix this problem myself this is out of my hand but I believe I can get you connected with the right places I would like to see what I could do to find out what I could actually do and also the proper people within our city employee who can help with that, or it may be a county issue, who can we connect with? And I'd like to see what could be done to, to make sure that I can help to facilitate a solution, but at the same time, have it be clearly stated that there are certain things that my hands are tied on. There are only, few, there are only a few things that I could do with without any real clearance on that. Learning more about that in the job obviously would be an interesting take to, to figure, but the fact of the matter is, if there's a problem with say someone's sidewalk, it would be improper for me to say, yes, I can fix that as a city council member, I'm going to follow this through. It would be the more proper thing to say, that is a problem, I see the problem, let's get this connected so it's in the proper channels and let the proper channels follow through with that. Thank you. Larry. Yes, I, I agree with Bob on a lot of that. Uh, he's right on target. There are certain things we can't do as a council, but we can be as a council and go to the mayor because she does have a little more authority and she meets with a lot more people higher up than the city council. And so I would go to Christy and say, you know what, we have a problem here. Do you think maybe you could talk? Because all the mayors meet in certain committees and whatever and things can get done that way because I remember when I was mayor if, if the mayors all agreed with something that pulled a lot of power when when it come up to higher into the Senate and, and so called so things here local when you talk about a tree I know there's some sidewalks that I've turned in and um, that you know they buckle and whatever and uh, is Lyle still working here Lyle okay well anyway he was, he was all over that, but the city does, you know, we need to fix those because when I became mayor, we, we had three or four lawsuits pending from kids riding their bikes at night and then flying through the air or people walking. And there was some, there was some $30,000, $40,000 lawsuits sitting there. So yeah, we have to be on top of things and I think all council people need to drive around their area and see what's wrong because those, they are problems, sidewalks and people at night walking. We do have a lot of that going on. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. So, Larry. Uh, oh, I said gentlemen. Oh, I thought you said John. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> um, representing District 5, you're going to be representing a little more than 10,000 residents. How do you plan to communicate with them to let them know what you're doing and get feedback on things they'd like to see done? So, Larry, you're first. Okay. Yes, first of all, you can, you can, uh, communicate with them on the uh, on the website. You can go. You can call them. You can go see their problems. Um, you just have to make yourself available. If they call you, I've learned long time ago being a salesman that when people call you, 
you don't wait that long to call them back because they'll give up on you. In my profession, if I had an order for some tires and I left them go two or three days, guess what? I didn't get the sale, it was gone. So we need to communicate with our people. We need to treat them great. And we need, if we don't know the answer, we need to try to find it and get back to them as possible. So, because they got some concerns and they could be concerns like the, the uh, road or the sidewalk that's hurt somebody. We just can't let things push aside because we're too busy. So we need to be on top of it. That's why they voted us in is to take care of them. So thank you. Well, I think the, the biggest thing is going with what Larry has mentioned, availability. I feel that there are many great advances that we've had over the past years to make it so that we can be available. And so I like to do everything that I can to respond to text messages, phone calls, emails, any time that someone reaches out, I want to contact them as soon as possible if I'm not able to answer their call immediately or a text and such. And the biggest thing I feel it would be to do, again, following with what Larry has mentioned, contact people. If there's a problem, people are reaching out, I want to be available. I've made it so that the, so that the phone number is available. It's out there on everything that I've made available for everyone to be able to contact me. And one of the biggest things that I have worked to do over the years is to respond to all messages when possible within one day. I like to be responsive. And the best way that we can truly be able to understand the needs from people is to be responsive when the problems come up. If a problem comes in and it's not addressed for a week, that's last week's problem. We need to look at what we can and address things as soon as possible. Thank you. Thanks, gentlemen. Um, citizen involvement is always a challenge. Um, what would you do to increase our citizen involvement through neighborhood home wa neighborhood watches, community council, otherwise? What are, what ideas do you have? Well, honestly, I think that going out and seeing what we can do to show how easy it can be to be involved is a helpful thing. As I've mentioned before, I've been involved with, with my neighborhood watch for several years, and it's a lot of fun when we can get a lot of people together focused on the problem that exists, and we can find a way to share the load so that it's not just on one person or one small group. When you have more people that you can involve and show that it's not going to be a huge time commitment to be involved with something like a neighborhood watch, for instance. For some of the things that we do, I go out on a mobile patrol for one weekend every, I believe it's up to three to four months now. That's not that big a commitment for my own neighborhood. And we've been able to get some more people involved, which has helped to spread things out. As you get more people involved, it lightens the load. And the same thing can be done with some of the projects that we have. There have been some great projects being done to improve Labrum Park, honestly. And I know that Councilmember Harker has been helping out with a lot of that. And Councilmember Barbieri, they've been helping. They've been so excited about that and being able to see how many people have shown up. Unfortunately, I've missed some of those days because I've had other commitments. But just being able to see the evidence of how many people have shown up it would be impossible to do that amount of work with just a small group. But if you can get people who would be willing to give an hour every so often to certain projects, that can help to lighten the load. If you give a realistic time constraint that can be met and will be met, people will more likely be willing to come back in if you can stay true to that promise that if you can say there's a two-hour project that we need some help on, and stay true to it's two hours or less versus turning into five or six hours, more people will be willing to come. Be honest, be transparent, and be true to the word with what you advertise. Thank you. Would you repeat that question? <laughs> well, I'm I got, looking at I the got, next question. I got I'm sorry. So much I forgot the question. 
Uh, no, it was talking about citizen involvement. Uh, what would you do to help get more of our citizens engaged in our community through either a community council, a yeah. neighborhood watch program, or any other idea you may have? I know the city has several committees. Right. I'm looking, how do you get citizens, what would you propose to do to get citizens involved? Well, the community councils, I, I don't know how they are now, but we had a hit and miss when I was mayor. Some would, some would report and some wouldn't, and hard to get them together. Um, I would love to see a sign out front here. That might not be possible, but we have the Performing Arts Center now, but to, to advertise when city council is. I've been through a lot of city councils, and this is probably about how many we have at a city council, which we'd like to pack the whole place in. But then I always say, well, if you attend a city council, you know what's going on, and, and people don't like to hear that, but you know, we, we have to get involved. As far as me being a city councilman, we're always, we always show by example, so get in there and get your hands dirty with them. And, um, and, they'll, and then when you ask again, they'll, they'll be there because they like to see, you know, the, oh, I'm a city councilman, I can't do that and get my hands dirty, but that's not the way it is in real life. So I'd, I'd, I'd do everything I could to, to show them by example and also it wouldn't be bad out there to be able to advertise when council meetings were or plays or anything like that. Thank you. So speaking of a time commitment, you've both chose to run. Um, it's not just a part-time thing. We see our councilman here for a meeting every two weeks, but there's much, there's stuff in between. How are you gonna balance family, employment, and council at the same time? And do you have, what's your plan to do all of those? My plan's the same thing I've done for many years. Um, I think we're all busy, but I always say you can make time if you, you know, we have time to watch TV, we have time to do this. I, when I commit to be here every Wednesday or go to a ribbon cutting, I get my schedule out so that I can make time for it. Um, I'm a believer in being organized. I always have since owning my own business for so many years. Um, it's important that we support the city uh, I know we had a lot of a lot of, of uh, ribbon cuttings with uh, Christy remembers those. We had a lot of those, and that's where we need to be is is showing examples to our citizens. And you know, it gets back to them that this council is good and togetherness. And um, I believe that you have to show by example and and be there. And uh, we can all make excuses, but if we budget our time, we can do it. I'm I got to admit I'm a busy person. But I'll be here every week, and I always have. Thank you. For, for me, being employed full-time with the university, that adds an extra layer of difficulty to be to some of those events, such as the ribbon cuttings and, and such in the middle of the workday. So unfortunately, there are some of those events that I know that I would have to miss because I have my commitments up there on the hill. However, I am in a good position where I have a decent amount of flexibility with my schedule where I can be allowed to attend some of the events. And again, it hails back to making the time where possible. And so to me, some of the biggest priorities would be first and foremost, making sure that I'm taking care of my family. I have three young boys, oldest one being nine. so. If there are certain events that they need me for and it interferes with me being able to go to say a ribbon cutting my priority will be to my son my sons need to have a father and not just a father they need to have a dad and so i want to be able to fulfill that while also being able to fulfill the duties that would be involved with city council and just knowing that my boys were willing to back me up with this they were willing to share their dad with the city, touched me in a great way, and knowing that they'd be willing to support me. So I feel that I'd be able to do everything that I could, but again, to the highest priority that I would have would be to the boys, making sure that I fulfill all of my commitments with the university while maintaining all of the commitments with the city and doing everything that I can to keep everything in balance. 
Thank you. Thanks. Jim, we're looking to focus a little bit on growth. Um, tax base from our businesses and attracting new businesses makes more funds available to our budget. Are there things that you would like to see come to Taylorsville or things that you would like to see changed as far as how we address our businesses and attract those here? So, Bob. Thank you. I, I've been impressed with how many businesses have actually been willing to come into the city, honestly. We are in a wonderful location. I've had several friends comment about how lucky I am to be in such a central place with so many venues close by. And I think that's been one of the greatest advantages that we've had for some of the businesses. So I'd like to see what we can do to make it easy for businesses to continue to thrive. One of the things that I would love to see, honestly, would be a bit of redevelopment of the area just off of 4700 South and 2700 West across from the credit union, across from the, from the temple site. That needs to be cleaned up a bit and it could stand to be redone. There are some nice vacant spots that would be great for some businesses. And I think that with some work, we could have a very attractive area that some businesses could fill and it would be a blessing to the city to to see some of those businesses fill those spots and it would be wonderful to see what we can do to make the process as painless as possible so that they're encouraged to keep it in Taylorsville instead of another city that might be a little easier for them to be in because we have so many great amenities. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm not a big proponent of the 12 story apartment units that Bob, I think you talked about going up Salt Lake and 7th East to all over the place. Um, I know a lot about that area you talked about. Uh, it's owned by the um, Kingstons, which I met with them before when I was mayor and they didn't want anything to do with selling it. So, you know, we hope that something would happen there because it's kind of run down. There's some other places that we could redevelop if we could get them to sell because there's a place on 4100 in Redwood they own too. So sometimes we, we wish, I remember when I was mayor, everybody says, hey, well, we got to have an olive garden in here. We got to have that. Well, you find out that when you go to those to talk about that, that olive garden is not going to move here because they're too close in West Valley. So you do the best you can. You try to, uh, uh, make deals and, and things like that because developers want to make money. Um, I think we've done a great job. I think a lot of the, the businesses that might have closed in Taylorsville were due to the COVID because business did slow. I think the program that they have working now with the $15 I got in the mail the other day to spend your money in Taylorsville is great. Uh, we could, you know, hopefully we'll come out of this COVID deal and um, uh, get back to normal, I hope. Uh, but one thing we have to do is, is we have to support Taylorsville. And um, we need to eat here, and, and that's what they're doing is giving these, these gift, gift, gift cards to get a discount, and I think it's great. Little things like that mean a lot. I know my wife looked at that the other day, and she said, oh, we got to go spend these. So if my wife's saying that, I think a lot of people are doing the same thing. So I think it's a great program. Uh, we always have to kind of make them up sometimes to – to uh, stretch out and, and bring the money in. I think we have some great, it's nice to see Regal back going. It was all because of the COVID. And uh, Texas Roadhouse moved over there. You can't even pull in the parking lot of there. It's so busy. So I congratulate the city on the way they've handled those things and uh, let's keep on going forward. So in that same vein, gentlemen, um, the big box stores are struggling. Um, we're buying more and more goods over the internet through Amazon and the like and having them delivered to our homes. Um, I've heard countless stores that we'd love to have in Taylorsville, but they're not buying new space right now. So within Taylorsville, we see the old uh, Kmart location out on 5400 South is being redeveloped, and we see a neighboring West Valley that re redeveloped that into mixed-use facilities. How do you feel about a mixed use development for possible redevelopment of existing commercial space? I'd have to see what they propose. Um, I know there's been some that uh, have apartments and uh, retail underneath or, 
you know, businesses to open up underneath. Um, I was reading where I think the council turned down the uh, one on 5400 over here, the big box area over there that David Wirtz has. Um, I don't want to see apartments in there. I mean, everything looks good in there and it's busy except that one big space in there. But we can give all the land away we have. I think, I don't know, Christy, what it is now, but we used to only be, have what, 5% left, 95% built in the city. That's not a lot of area, you know, to grow. But what we have in there, we need to take advantage of the good prime property and build the proper stuff. So, thanks. I honestly think that everything should be considered. And I agree with what Larry has said, honestly, that if there is a proposal for mixed use, let's take a look at it. Have the city council review it. Have the, have the public service commission and the planning commission take a look at things. Look at what mission can be filled with the city. And let's really figure out what would be the best for the city itself. As I mentioned before, let's not overdevelop, but let's not say no to everything just because we don't want to overdevelop. Every proposal should be looked at, and if it doesn't align, either it should be rejected or edited to something that could align with the city and would be a reasonable compromise. So I think that everything should be considered as we look at what we can do to grow the city, redevelop items, but we need to be careful with the resources that we have because we don't have a lot of area to grow in as it has been commented because we have the tight spaces. And so that's an important part to, that we need to keep an eye on as we look to support the businesses and the residential growth as best we can. So talking growth, we'll go on to another topic after this. Um, Projected in, in the Salt Lake Valley and along that Wasatch Front is that we're going to increase anywhere from 40 to 50 percent over where we're at now in the next 20 years. Taylorsville, as mentioned, is nearly built out. Um, we've had a challenge within the city of what we call boarding houses, renting a room versus having legal compliant mother-in-law or auxiliary dwelling units. How would you go about solving the challenge with the boarding room scenarios? Well, one of the things that did come out of the last legislative session was the approval for auxiliary dwelling units in all cities. I applaud the fact that we had great representation up on the legislative hill to be able to try and get a lot of the, a lot of the modeling off of what we already had here in Taylorsville. I think that we'd done a great job to pioneer some of these things. And this is just an impossible problem to be able to cleanly solve across the board. To, with all of the growth that we've been having, we just do not have the carrying capacity in Taylorsville to be able to fix the entire situation. So I think that the best thing that we can do is as we, as we figure out ideas as to what is going to be coming up as possible problems and solutions that we may have, well, we need to figure out what we can do to be proactive so that problems are addressed before they become a nightmare to the city because we cannot afford to lose what we have in the resources we have. Great. We, we had some problems um, years ago, and I remember one certain house that it was a boarding. They, were, they had like 12 or 14 people in one home, and uh, <clears throat> they were getting a good sum of money. Um, the police went in there one night and got a warrant and found it was a meth, meth house, okay? So they closed it down. But, you know, the, the, the problem is, is there's so many families living in one home. And, you know, I know that I don't, I haven't read the ordinance yet on, on where they are now, the city, but the, uh, it used to be you had to have a license plate. So if they take the license plate numbers and it was a member of the family or whatever and so many people, but it's becoming a problem because all the influx of immigrants and people coming into the, 
United States, I mean, you know, it's pretty, and rent right now is at $1,800 a month on an average or something, which is, you know, more than my house payment, so. But anyway, it, it is a problem, and uh, um, I don't know what the answer is right now, but, but I know one thing, that the attorney, when we fought this other one that we closed down, it took us months, almost a year, to even get the thing closed down because it's like throwing people out of a home. There's certain laws that, you know, you can't just throw them out in the cold. So I'd have to, you know, as we go on, we have to continue to discuss this because I think it's getting worse. Okay. So um, last question, and then we'll give you a chance to kind of surmise, okay? Um, in many ways, Taylorsville is kind of a pass-through city. We have citizens of the, the valley that are coming through to get to their areas in West Valley, Kearns, uh, West Jordan, or any community south. Uh, creates a lot of traffic. Do you, see, do you foresee something that you would like to see done to improve one of those roads or situations? <clears throat> one of those roads or just all of them? Anything. Okay. Your choice. Okay. Um, Let's start with the uh, flex lanes on 5400. You know, they were put in to, I remember looking at that with uh, Senator Dunner, Representative Dunnigan when that first was proposed. Um, it saved, I think it was $15 million to save three seconds going from, say, where the Francesco's Robintino's is up to that neck in Kearns, up by, say, the Minute Louvre or whatever. Um, I know the police, when we, they reported, the wrecks there, the, the traffic moved a little faster, but the wrecks were more damaging. They were more deadly or more injuries than ever because the speed was, was there. Um, <clears throat> I think people now, as far as roads go, uh, I wouldn't mind seeing a little slower speed limit through the cities. <coughs> uh, we're mainly 35, I think, no, 40, 40. And uh, West Jordan's 35, <coughs> excuse me. Um, speeding's a problem, uh, jaywalking's a problem. It, it, there's just so many things that uh, we, need to, we need to address. And, but we keep growing, more cars on the road. And uh, I think we're having a, <coughs> is it a bus or a tracks coming up 47th? And uh, that'll help. I guess I better have some water. But anyway, it is a problem with more cars, and people like their cars. And you get on the tracks, they drop you up somewhere, but it seems like more people want cars, a little more freedom to go where they want. So <coughs> this is a problem in the city we need, to, we need to address, but it takes some thinking things out instead of just, we're going to do this. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Well, similar to, uh, to what Larry's already mentioned, I've observed several of those issues with the flex lanes, and, and honestly, <coughs> even when the flex lanes are not in operation, 5400 South is a dangerous road. I, I was actually answering a, a call for help with, one, with some of my friends who actually live just north of City Hall here a few weeks ago, and as I was waiting to make, a, to make that left turn to go on to 2700 West, someone, was, someone actually ran the red light after it had been red for about a good 10 seconds and had I not stopped and waited for them, I could have had my car wrecked and possibly had a, a scarring injury. And so there's a lot of danger on those roads. I think that we do need to have <coughs> improvements made so that we have people actually driving safely, nothing is going to ever be perfect. But at the same time, I think that we can also make some improvements. And as, all, as has also been mentioned, there are going to be some improvements on 4700 South. I am grateful that going back with this last legislative session, we actually had approval given so that there would be dollars passed on through the, through the state to all of the cities that we have in the state instead of just the top two or three that would complain the most about something, but we can potentially get a wish list of things that we would like to do to improve. As we improve 4700 South and the flow there, 
that will help to alleviate issues. We can also look to come up with our task list of what are the next items that we want to add on. And as we look at those, take a look at the true problems, there can be some great strides made to improve the city and make it so that it's even better for the citizens living here and also for those who are transiting through from point A to point B. Thank you. Thanks, gentlemen. Um, put, putting your name on the ballot is not an easy task. And we thank you for being willing to put your name out there and serve our citizens. Ballots are likely to be mailed on the 12th, which is next Tuesday, uh, and it'll be a mail-in ballot. So give you a minute each to give your final pitch as to why you should be the candidate they would vote for. Well, I'll start since, I, since that's been the flow, but I feel that I have a unique view, having lived here for all of my life, having grown up in this city. I have a fresh set of eyes that has been able to observe things, and I feel that I can bring a different view that would look at things from a logical standpoint, and I'm willing to look at everything and not give a blanket yes or no. That is my gut feel. I feel that I could do a great job with everything, and I am grateful for everyone who has been willing to support me, and I would love to have everyone participate in this election. So I feel that with the, with the things that I can bring to the table, I bring a unique view and I would love to be able to have that support. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. Thank you, Bob. As uh, a city councilman <clears throat> years ago and a mayor a few years ago, I feel like I've shown leadership. I can show leadership in the council. Um, I, I, I feel like I'm proven in getting results with some of the things that I did as mayor. We brought some businesses in. Uh, I love to listen to people's opinion, in, especially in my own district. Um, I don't have an agenda that I'm after to win this election. I'm here to help this, the city and the people of Taylorsville. Uh, like I said, I've lived here 65 years, and this is home to me. Um, I'm, I'm really concerned about the young people and the older people, ones that are retired, and them, and, and striving to keep taxes in, in out of not raise taxes if we had to in a, in a desperate deal, but the, I'm a senior citizen, and I'll tell you right now, you get it on a one income, it's tough. I've had experience on the job for many years, um, and also I'd just like to say that I support the police department 100%, and also the fire and those first responders that help us all. Those are my heroes too. and. Um, I love the time that I spent with the kids in teaching and reading Dr. Seuss to them when I was mayor. It was just a joy. So I'd like to get back in, into the city and, and see if I can um, help in any way I can. So thank you very much. Thank you for your time. We'll wrap this up and let those that are watching on Facebook go on the rest of their lives. And thank you so much, gentlemen. Thank you. Good luck to both of you and have, wish you well. Okay, thank you. Thank you.